Hi, I am Luke Oxley, a veteran from Team 6498, and in this presentation I will be covering the FRC pneumatic system. First, I wanted to do a brief description of each of the components used for pneumatics. First is the air tank, and this stores pressure on the robot, and in this case it is at 120 psi. If your team wants, you can have multiple of these air tanks to store even more pressure. The air compressor is what compresses the air up to 120 psi, and this is controlled by the PCM, or Pneumatics Control Module. Next is the pressure switch. This is what monitors the pressure and makes sure that the pressure stored in the air tank does not exceed 120 PSI. Once the air pressure in the tank is at 120, this will send a signal to stop the compressor. And this is connected to the PCM. Next is the pressure release valve. Just in case something isn't working, such as the PCM breaks or the compressor for some reason, continuously is compressing air, this will release any pressure that exceeds 120 PSI to prevent overloading of the system and to make sure your air tank does not explode, which would be pretty big. Next is the pressure vent. This is how we empty the pressure stored in the air tank on the robot. Make sure that you close this before enabling the robot if you're wanting to do anything with pneumatics or else the compressor will continuously run but the system won't build any pressure. It is dangerous to leave pressure inside the robot whenever it's not in use. So when done using pneumatics, always vent the pressure. Next is the pressure regulator. This is what controls the working pressure on the robot. Since their air is stored at 120 PSI in the air tank, we actually only use 60 PSI in our solenoids. To get this drop in PSI, we regulate the air. It is actually a rule in the FRC rulebook that your working pressure is at 60 PSI and they will make sure it is at competitions. Next is the solenoid. This is how we electronically control airflow to actuate pistons. And this is connected to the PCM. This is the PCM or pneumatics control module. And this is what controls the entire pneumatic system. In order for the Roborio to communicate to this, it uses the CAN bus. As you can see on this device, the CAN bus is right here. For this device to get power, the 12 volt input ports are right here. The compressor connects right here. The pressure switch connects here. And all of these are actually labeled on the PCM. And all of these ports labeled zero through seven are where the solenoids connect to. Whenever we want to convert this compressed air into linear motion, we use a pneumatic piston. Now there are two types, double acting or single acting. In this case, this is a picture of a double acting piston because there are two ports for air input here and here. Whenever we want to actuate this piston, we will input air on one side and vent the other port. This will actuate the piston in any motion you want. The advantage to double acting compared to single acting are that there is a force in each direction of motion. However, in a single acting, there is only one port for pressure, meaning that only one direction is forcefully controlled by air and the other direction is usually controlled by a spring. 
Now I'm going to go over kind of the wiring of the pneumatic system. Now this is the wiring in terms of air hoses. So first we have the pressure is compressed here. Generally, we connect the pressure release valve directly to the air compressor. This isn't always the case, but that's just kind of what we do. Next, the air travels through and is stored in the air storage tank. And then somewhere along the line, you have to have these components, the pressure vent, which is where whenever we're done with the pneumatic system, we can vent the stored pressure. We must have a stored pressure gauge, which is in the rule book. They will inspect for this. And this is how we can tell how much pressure is in the air tank. And then the pressure switch, which tells the system when it reaches 120 PSI. Once we have these things, we can actually do stuff with this pressure. First, we regulate it down from 120 to 60 PSI with the pressure regulator. And notice how this does have a pressure gauge on this. It is actually a role to have a pressure gauge on your regulator just so that they can tell that you're working with 60 PSI only. Once you regulate it, the air will go to solenoids and then to pistons. In terms of wiring, this is just a basic FRC control system setup. Say we want to add pneumatics to this. First, we would get a PCM, and it gets its power from the third auxiliary power port on the PDP, as seen there. And then to communicate with it, it is over CAN bus. So we would connect to the CAN bus from the Roborio or whatever device you want to use in the bus to the PCM. And then in this case, our bus terminates at the PDP. Next, we have a air compressor and that gets plugged up to the air compressor port labeled on the PCM. In order to make sure that our system doesn't exceed 120 PSI, we had the pressure switch and that's wired at the pressure switch ports. And if we want to add a solenoid, we would just wire it on the solenoid ports. And that concludes the pneumatic overview. Thanks.